By all accounts, he was compassionate and gracious to everyone. He stood up for the poor and the marginalized and brought healing and wholeness to those whose lives were broken by disease and injury and life's challenges. There was no one quite like him in the land. Just a few days earlier, the crowds had shouted, Hosanna! And now they tossed insults at him. When, where once the people saw him as the harbinger of a new order, now they saw him as only lonely and defeated. No one, you know, wants to follow a failure. Luke tells us that darkness settled at noon and covered the land until 3 o'clock that afternoon. That darkness was a sign of judgment. It was an omen that said God would not be mocked. And just then we're told that the veil of the temple which blocked access to the Holy of Holies, the dwelling place of the Most High, according to Jewish tradition, was torn in two. Torn in two, just like when during Jesus' baptism, the sky was torn open and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove upon Jesus. Once again, declaring to us that where once there was a wall of separation that kept Jew and Gentile apart, that kept God and humanity apart, that dividing wall, that dividing wall was destroyed forever. And then, having endured all that was humanly possible, Jesus called out one last time to God, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having given this one last word, he breathed his final breath, and it was over. He had fought the good fight, but the body could go.
one is our scapegoat. And then there are the crowds who leave the scene in mourning, beating their breasts. And though Luke doesn't record their words, their actions tell us that they left the scene feeling both grief and contrition. I say to you, also that we also must go home. We also must go and beating, beat our own breasts with those, with those whose hopes seem to die there. I say this to you because I truly believe that it is only by witnessing the darkness of Jesus' death and the despair and loss of hope that we can fully appreciate the joy of resurrection. For there is no Easter without a Good Friday. And finally, on the periphery of the crowd, we find Jesus' friends and family, including the women from Galilee. They stood at a distance. Maybe they were afraid of arrest. They were also there to give witness to their devotion to the one who had died that day on a Roman cross. It would seem that they were the last to leave. Maybe they wanted to see what would happen next. Maybe hoping that, that this wasn't really the end. Together, these three voices, they confirm that this man was no ordinary criminal. In fact, he was no ordinary man. Oh, they might not fully understand all that had happened, but they all recognize that they've been touched by the hand of God. At the moment of their witness, they didn't know the rest. Story. But of course, this is not true of those of us who do know the story of resurrection. <clears throat> what do we make of the cross? Luke seems to invite us to stay a while and to take in this sight so that we may fully appreciate the blessings of Easter, and it's this moment of quiet that gives full meaning to what happens next. Oh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may we, may we, when we come to the end of our pilgrimages, when the days begin to decline and the shadows of death surround us, may we 